And we're back. Mike Cernovich. Cernovich.com. Here to talk a little bit more about the energy shift we've all felt. And also the new era that we're entering into. Entering into. So a lot of people go. Mike Cernovich. They have all these theories about me. I always love reading articles. Actually, I don't read the articles because they're dumb. People who don't talk to me think they understand me. And these are not people who have had any real success in life or have ever had any really real insight. Uh, insight. So, but I got a message from a friend, very, very liberal friend. And she told me she's not on social media anymore, not on any Twitter. And she's lost weight. She feels better. And here's what she said. I go online and I think the world is ending. And then I live and people are being jerks like normal or having babies or going for lunch or having a good life. I, and, and I've noticed that when, you know, when I'm out and about in, in the real world, people are for the most part nice to each other. But, I mean, you have the occasional jerk. But when you go out, it seems like fine, right? But online, it's just really toxic. What is happening is that the new era we're entering is I call it the era of conversation. People are, and that's why Kanye was such a major change agent. People are just tired of the toxic people. I mean, I myself am tired of the toxic people. I made a joke during the Syria bombing, and I, uh, and I said, well, at least I won't care if Trump's impeached. Clearly a joke. Anybody who knows me know, knows that I make a lot of jokes. And people were like angry at me. And I thought, why are you, why are you following me? How did I attract such a toxic following of just nasty people? How did I, how did I attract these people, right? What energy am I sending out to the unit? I don't want these people around me. I don't want people around me who can't laugh. People around me who don't have joy for life. People around me who can't crack jokes and hang out with people they disagree with. I don't want, so I thought, how do I have these people around me? So I've been trying to get rid of followers. Most people have the opposite problem. They'll do anything for fame. I'm, I'm like, man, I got to get rid of these people. And by the way, I will tell you something. Uh, the people who I've been losing, all deadbeats, all, I mean, I have ways to track this stuff. Um, I haven't lost a single person who has ever actually supported a project that I've done in a big way. So the negative people are all deadbeats anyway. They just want to sit around all day and be angry. And be. And this is left, right, center, you name it. People just want to be online and be ugly and be angry about people. And they just don't, they don't have any fun. So people are entering a new era where you just don't want to be around that. You don't want, you just like, you know what? You guys over here fighting. The way... The way the energy manifests, because energy, most people cannot sense the energy. I can channel. I can channel energy. So me, I can tell where the, where the energy is flowing without looking at physical manifestations of energy. Most people don't know the energy is shifted until they, until they see it right. And they're like, wow, where'd that come from? So I'll give you an example. I would say that Charlottesville was the high water mark of the sickening energy. That was one of the beginnings of the energy shift. And here's why it was. If you watch the media, you think, oh, there's counter protest. They're always counter protesters, right? They're never called Antifa terrorists, right? Even though an Antifa terrorist tried to murder a man in New York, a Jewish Trump supporter outside of an event. So the media doesn't ever want to report on that. The media makes it seem like, oh, there's just this one side. They're all bad guys. But People go to those alt-right events, Antifa, to fight. They, they would show up with billy clubs and, oh, we're just defending ourselves. So 10,000 of you show up to an event where there's like 500 dorks wearing khakis, right? It, it, just, it just always cracks me up. They go, we're just counter-protesting. Well, then why do you need billy clubs and bats and pepper spray? Well, because, you know, those other guys, yeah, but there are like 10,000 of you, right? There's like 50 of these losers and khakis, right? So people would show up because both sides, left and right, they wanted to show up and murder each other. That's where, that's where we were as a country, and that's where, you know, the energy can always change. That's what could happen soon, but that, that's an absurd, absurd thing, right? But that, so that was like the high watermark. It's like, well, wait a minute, somebody actually died. 
right? Maybe you guys on both sides are taking a little bit too far, right? Then I had people, um, Antifa show up to one of my events. They said they wanted to line me up against a wall. And they said they wanted to murder me. They showed up to my New York event. And they said they wanted to murder my daughter. So that's the energy on the Antifa, the toxic energy on the left. And what you liberals got to realize, the liberals who do watch me, that energy is going to blow back on you. That toxic energy is going to impact your life. And that's why people are you know, gaining weight. They're not healthy. They don't look healthy. They're not going to the gym. Uh, we're all just caught in this thing. And we all know it's not healthy. So what I'm doing is in life, because it's kind of like what I do for a living, in my life, whenever I notice a problem, I find ways to change it. And change begins with yourself. Cultural change begins with yourself. If you're not a leader in your own life, how can you lead a movement? How can you lead other people? You have to take leadership in your own life. So me, I just said, well, I, I'm changing certain things to, to get rid of the negative, nasty people, the negative, nasty. I block two, 300 people a day now. These are fans. If you say one dopey, just comment that just even feels wrong energetically. If I just feel the vibration of it, I just block. I don't want you in my life anymore. And then people go, oh, your views are down, your video views are down. I'm like, yeah, I know, but I've proven that I can get the big views. Okay, great. Oh, I can do you know, millions of views on Facebook videos and blah, 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 blah. Great, I've, I've proven that. And, and all that did was uh, drew more toxicity in my life. It, um, there's a joke that goes something like this. When you become partner at a law firm, a, mar a major law firm, you've won a pieing contest where the prize is more pie. That's where I was in my media life. The, the prize of winning the contest of viewers are more toxic people in my life, more negative people in my life, more people who can't take a joke, more people who don't think for themselves, more people who are just angry at the world and they don't want to change their own lives. So... My reward for this great media success was more toxic people. It's a pie eating contest. Oh, congratulations. You've won. Here's another pie for you to eat. So for me, I just felt, okay, I'm changing. Now, a lot of people say, oh, you know, then they, they always have conspiracy theories about it. Some people claim that I've been taken over by Mossad. Other people claim I don't have any sources anymore, so therefore I can't break news. And I guess my answer to... Those points are that. All those really big Trump stories. Oh, my God, they're so big. Well, Trump's still your president. John Conyers is not your congressman. So if you want to, you know, if you want to measure, if you want to measure pinkies, right? If you want to get the old pinkies out and do a little pinky measurement contest. John Conyers is not in Congress anymore. How many journalists in their entire career will ever be able to say that a congressman or congresswoman resigned? because of their reporting and their entire career. I just showed up from out of nowhere, the Gorilla Mindset guy, and did it. So that, that's just professional jealousy that people have. Is they've done this and prepared for it, and they, they can't get any big stories. The Mossad stuff is weird. Like, what, what would I get from Mossad? I don't, I don't understand that. They're like, oh, you're a, you're a Zionist shill now, Cernovich. What does, it, what does it mean to be, I don't, what is a Zionist shill? I don't even, and that's another thing too, is there are just so many weird people with bizarro, and I thought, how are those people ever watching me? How would they even know that I'm a Zionist shill? Like, I don't want those kooks watching me. I don't want those creepy people watching me. Like, how did they find me, right? What, what a freak weirdo. You're a Zion, you've been taken over by the Zionists and I'm a Zionist shill? Or, no, or a Zionist gatekeeper? Who am I gatekeeping? Who am I keeping out? None of, right? None of it makes sense. So if you read the mainstream media conspiracy theories about me, they claim, oh, I just don't have any sources anymore. And, but, you know, no congressman has ever resigned because of them or congresswoman. And then on the other side, you have people go, oh, I've been taken over by the Zionists and become a Zionist gatekeeper. It's just also very weird. It's just all weird. It's, all, it's just very sick, actually. The energy is just sick. Doesn't, doesn't make you feel good. So the energy shift, well, the energy shift, a lot of people are going to go 
to a more positive place, okay? Because I look at myself, and you can tell people go, Mike, you're looking better. You're looking healthier, right? People have said, oh, you look like you've lost weight. Your face looks better. Yeah, because when I was just doing that media nonsense, oh, go, 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 so-and-so got fired, so-and-so's not, scoop. Here's the latest White House leak. Why do people, like, these stories... What I do when I like reflect on my life is I think about all these big stories that I had and I'm like, well, other than the John Conyers one, none of them, you know, most journalism is just birdcage liner, right? Today's news is tomorrow, but it's birdcage liner. It doesn't have any impact. And in my life, I want to think, how can I have impact? How can I do? So I'm working on a major story, a major story, but it's going to take me three to six months to develop. It's a John Conyers kind of situation. Those are the only stories that interest me. And then otherwise, I'm really focused on my health, looking good, feeling good, vitality, that, that sort of stuff. I'm not interested, not interested in the, the grind of every day, just nonsense, right? Trump's still your president. Donald Trump is still your president. Just so, my, so for me, yeah, I've, I've just changed. I looked around. I saw a lot of people I don't like around me. So what we're doing now, is, by the way, there is weird things. The volcano, all those airplane crashes. I love now whenever there's a plane crash, people DM me. That's kind of cool. So I'm being like known as the guy who's monitoring the plane crashes. So to me, that's like kind of fun, actually. Like, not fun that the planes are crashing. That's tragic. But f kind of funny that that's what people think of when they think about me. But to me, the plane crashes are connected to the energy shift. Wait, wait, how are plane crashes? Well, you're going to notice the physical manifestation of energy movements in high-precision, high-stakes games. Let me say that again. Energy can be felt, but you will observe the energy shift most acutely in instances requiring precision. Sounds like a plane, right? So if the energy is just off a little bit, then you might wake up and say, oh, I just got a headache. I haven't been sleeping well. I've been feeling in a little funk, right? Because that isn't like a high precision um, instrument. But if you're a pilot where one degree either way is life or death, then that's where you're going to notice the physical manifestations of the energy shift. That's why the plane crashes are connected to the shift. Everybody, you know, so in your own life, you might be like, oh, I'm just a little bit off and feel a little out of my game. I'm just not quite getting, you know, the results I used to do. Well, yeah, that's part of the energy shift. That's what you're noticing. But when we're talking about one degree, right, that's where you're really going to notice it most acutely. And that's why we've been having those plane crashes, because it's connected to the energy shift. Because if you're a pilot, if you're a pilot and your game is off just a little bit, then that is a different, different way of life, right? It's just a different, different way of life. Now, where is it all going to lead? Well, I mean, it's really, we're, it's up to us, really. That's why I said golden age or stone age. It is up to us to be the change we want to see in the world. And, and leadership starts with yourself. That's where people go wrong. Leadership starts with your own behavior, your own values, your own attitudes, your own actions. And I can't expect the world to change if I don't change. And that's where people in politics, so they're not leaders because they always want to complain about what is happening. Oh, I'm upset. I have asthma. It sucks. You know what complaining about asthma has ever done for me in my life? Nothing. Complaining that I have asthma, dyslexic. I mean, it's just the, the cards I were dealt. So complaining about that is going to do what for me? I still got asthma and dyslexia, right? But if you're in politics and you think, well, I'm going to complain about the system, like what is that really going to get you? We're still in a rigged system. Hillary Clinton's not going to prison. I don't know. You know, I've been telling you this. She's never going to be indicted. Why? Because that isn't the way it works. We live in a plutocracy. And in the plutocracy, if you're Wall Street, you get bailed out. If you're a homeowner, you get foreclosed on and go, go live on the streets. That's the world we live in. And if you're a child, maybe that's upsetting. But if you're an adult, then you agree to live in the world we live in. And maybe you try to change it, but the change has to start with yourself. 
So people are going, oh, can't believe it. Hillary Clinton, she's, not, she's just get over it. Just move on with your life. Not going to happen. But she broke the law. Okay, so? You, uh, so? Uma broke it. I mean, they all broke the law. What do you, so what? It doesn't matter. And the plutocracy, it's just about what you know and who has the power and whether they want to use that power to frame you. That's why a lot of you should be more sympathetic to Black Lives Matter and other groups, right? Everybody ranting about how rigged it is. Well, at least Manafort can afford lawyers, right? You know, think about that. Think about that. Think about what, you know, poor, poor people in the inner cities have to deal with. If you, you know, right, you got to think a little bit bigger than yourself. And that's what I mean by the, the new era. We're just entering into people who are going to be more sane, be willing to have a conversation. Why are people trying to drag Kanye out of the conservative movement? Right? He's not even a conservative. Why are people trying to purge Kanye? It's an energy. Because that's like a toxic energy. You can't say, oh, wow, there's this new kind of force here. The toxic energy, is all it can do is destroy. If it isn't being a polemic, right, there's different energy in the world. There's creative energy and destructive energy. Most people in the media have a destructive energy. Donald Trump is a terrible guy. The NRA is a terrorist organization. Kanye is not a role model. Everybody's evil. Lock her up. She's evil. Impeach Trump. Trump is a bad guy. Yay, Stormy, right? That's the energy is just toxic, destructive energy. But what, what about building? What about building up? What about building up themselves? What about building up other people? Well, they, that, that to them, because I have both energies. I'm, I'm balanced energetically. I have the creative energy and I have the destructive energy. By the creative energy, who held the night for freedom? Biggest event of the year. Who held the biggest inauguration event? Deplorable. Right? Who's doing films? Books. Who's actually creating? Who's actually creating? That's what you have to ask yourself. Because I can be destructive and polemic and attack and go, go, go and all the negative energy. I can do negative but I can do positive too. I can actually create books, films, art, narrative structure, events, community, fellowship, love, joy. That's the creative energy. The people going after Kanye, do they ever build anything up, right? Just all toxic. And, and you're going to have both energies, but my advice to people would be try to focus on your creative energy. Ask yourself every day, what am I building? I wrote an article, I don't know, five years ago called Become a Builder or the Key to Male Sanity. can't remember what it was. My, my audience was largely um, men, but this applies to women too, is what are you building? That's what I ask myself every day is what am I building? Who am I building up? There are so many great people now that I've watched come from little hatchlings to become dragons now. I'm like the father of dragons. There are these powerful people now who were young and when they had nobody, I was the one who built them up. And now they're doing their own thing and I'm not boundary policing them. Right? I'm not, I'm not boundary, I'm not boundary policing them. I'm not out there telling them what they can or can't do. Because I'm always thinking, who am I building up? People that you how many people have you never heard of before me? And it's just the reality, right? There are people that you never heard of before I mentioned them. Right? You just, you'd never heard of them. And then suddenly, you know, now they're like household names or whatever. Think about that. That's what I mean by the, the creative energy. The creative energy is who are you building up? And then you have to build yourself up too. It, it, it works both ways. And that is more my mindset. Last year, you know, I just was... Got to, you know, take on all these wars and everything, and that's fine. But you got to build people up, too. You got to take care of yourselves. You got to be, you got to be healthy. So is that going to cost me? No, it actually is saving me. Because the negative people are deadbeats. 
Negative people are mad. I mean, this is a thing that like I couldn't believe. So I invested in a company has great products. If you've ever bought a youth, for example, skincare serum, you know that this stuff is like $100 in a spa. If you buy a different brand, it's like 30 and I'm able to sell it for $16.99. It's on sale for $9.99. People are mad at me. I, th I thought like, well, wait a minute. I'm investing in a company that makes products that I bought personally for years and then I'm selling the products that people use. Like, why would you be mad about that? To me, it, it just doesn't really register. Well, because too many toxic people have found me where ne they're losers. There's no other way to put it. If you're angry at people who start businesses, you are a loser, a first-class loser. There is no nice way to put it. You've been coddled. You've been pandered to. You've been sucked up to by people desperate for a page view, desperate for a vote, desperate for some jolt of self-esteem. I don't need a vote. I don't need a page view. And I get my self-esteem for my self-respect and the way I live my life and the way I raise my family and the way I take care of things. That's what I, so I don't need that. So you, you're not used to somebody like me talking to you in a real manner, which is if you're mad at people starting businesses and delivering value to the world, then you are a loser. And I had 100,000 losers following me. So when those people leave, I have lost nothing. I've gained now because it's addition by subtraction. Toxic people in your life are spiritual vampires. This is something that people who have read Guerrilla Mindset know and understand. In my own personal life, if you're a negative person, I end the friendship. If the first thing you want to do when we meet is gossip, then what I do is I don't talk to you anymore. I just end it. Why? Because toxic energy wears you down and then you don't have positive energy for creative endeavors. So I had people just angry. People said, oh, I'm going to unfollow you if you talk about this. Good. You loser. You deadbeat. You parasite. Go. Leave. You're not doing me any favors. If you're angry at people trying to better themselves, angry at people creating businesses, angry at entrepreneurs, it's not a threat. Oh my God, I'll never watch you again because you have a skincare product that you tout. Oh my God, please unfollow. But so for me, the bigger problem is how the hell do I get rid of these people? So I just block them. 200,000 people. 200,000 200, people I'm trying to get rid of. I block 200 people a day, sometimes 300. Why? Because I just don't want to hear the complaints. By the way, we had a labeling error, GorillaMind.com. This serum is the truth. Um, people, again, if you're still watching, I don't want to hear you complain because you got to leave. Because maybe you don't want to look good. That's fine. Maybe you just want to be ugly and nasty and eat Doritos all day and not go interact in the real world, that's fine with me. That's your choice. It's your life. It isn't up to me to tell you how to live, but people who want to live a better life. And the truth is that vanity matters. Your appearance does matter. It isn't fair. It's not fair. Welcome, welcome to life, right? Whoa, life, life is not fair. I mean, that'll be the number one lesson I teach Syrah, but not in the negative. Well, life isn't fair. The rules I'm teaching Syra. Rather than just being negative, life isn't fair. I teach you the positive energy. I say life isn't fair, but you can find rules that work to your favor. And if you play those rules, then you will, in a long enough timeline, be a success. The rules of life. The rules of Cernovich. So if you go to GorillaMind.com, G-O-R-I-L-L-A-M-I-N-D.com, I'm missing an L here. I see Shauna's watching. Shauna, we're missing, we're missing an L. So we only have, we need two L's. Gorillas with two L's. So Shauna, blame her on that. G-O-R-I-L-L-A-M-I-N-D.com. Gorillamind.com. Uh, this is a serum formulated based on what I would spend $30 a month on. It's got hyaluronic acid. It has vitamin B5. It has aloe, which is anti-inflammatory. Because my skin gets really inflamed. I actually, you can't, my skin looks good, but the lighting, I need to, the lighting is a little off, or maybe the lens is off. But I took a picture leaving the spa yesterday, so I'll show you. You know, 
you can go to my Instagram, instagram.com forward slash C-E-R-N-O-V-I-C-H. Follow me there. But this Gorilla Youth Serum is hyaluronic acid, vitamins B and C, green tea, which is anti-inflammatory, aloe, which is anti-inflammatory. It's a great product. We had a major labeling issue where the labels weren't printed correctly. And, you know, maybe there was only one Ellen Gorilla. I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to say. But, um... But we got it fixed. So $9.99 because it's back in stock. And, you you know, go comparison shop. Go find a comparable product on Amazon. You're not going to find anything. Go look. Go find comparable products on Amazon. You're not going to find it for under 30 bucks, right? So go comparison shop. I don't have any issue with that. But this, the $9.99 price is over at midnight. I don't know what time zone midnight. I don't know if that's central time, Pacific time. That isn't, I don't run the company. Somebody else runs the company. I'm an investor. So I'm not the CEO. I'm not even the CEO, right? Somebody else is a CEO. So midnight, the $9.99 is over. So you can go to GorillaMind.com as a website. Click on the products tab. Go to Gorilla Youth Serum. And then there you go. Um, original, so $17 is the original it's on sale for $9.99, Gorilla Mind, G-O-R-I-L-L-A-M-I-N-D.com, Gorilla Mind.com. I'm tripping over my words today. Why am I tripping over my words? Because, because I've been more contemplative. I spent a lot of time yesterday in the ice baths and the cold plunges. And because that's how I write my books. I don't think people go, how do you write your books? People go, how do you um People go, how do you write your books? Well, I write them in my head. I write them on my head, in my head, in my brain. So what I do is I either do a lot of walking or a lot of exercise that gives me what I call singularity of purpose, where the only thing on my mind is survival. That's why I love hill sprints. When you run a hill then you do that hill sprint. By the time you get to the top of the hill, you, you want to die, right? You're, you can't breathe. So I don't know, like your gums hurt. That's what I mean by singularity of purpose is in life, what I do, not just when I'm in a creative funk, but when I want to be more creative, is I find a task that gives me singularity of purpose. Now, singularity of purpose can be a number of tasks. One for me is a hill sprint. Nothing makes me feel like I'm about to die like a hill sprint. I even have, um, I have hills actually that I go run near me. And it was funny, there's a guy doing a document, not a guy, it's a big company doing a documentary on me and my life. And he's like, all right, I want to film you do hill sprints. So I ran the one hill, God, I was tired. Ran the second one, I almost died, right? Just in my own head. I'd... But see, when I get that singularity of purpose, then I have creative focus because that's what people don't really understand about creativity. Creativity is not being all over the place. Creativity is actually a singularity of focus. And then how do you develop that singularity of focus? Well, for me, I develop singularity of focus and thus enhance my creativity by doing a hill sprint or by physically exhausting myself or by doing Wim Hof breathing or by doing an ice bath. Because if you do an ice bath or even a cold, cold plunge, <sighs> right, you're shaking. You're shaking. And then you have to decide, am I going to be weak and leave before the timer's up? It's key to have a timer to hold you accountable. So for me, I like to do five-minute rounds. So I do five minutes in cold where I'm <sighs> shivering, and I'm, I'm in there for five minutes. So then the conversation I have with myself is, Okay, five minutes, are you going to get out and quit because you're pathetic and you'll never amount to anything and you'll be a loser? Are you going to get out? And I, of course not, I'm not going to get out and quit. You got your mind? Five minutes is what I'm in for. Well, when you make that decision to remain in the cold water, you now have singularity of purpose. Everything is now collapsed into just that one function is, okay, I'm going to stay in this cold water no matter how I shake. And what happens when you have singularity of purpose? Well, the universe opens up to you then. 
because you're, when you have singularity of purpose, you're not focused on distractions. You're not focused on the news or whatever nonsense is going on. You're not even focused on your personal problems because you can only focus on one thing, which is survival. And then as you do that, you attain a state of mindfulness. And in that state of mindfulness, then you can move around. So for me, here's what happens. I go into the cold. <sighs> okay, well, I got to, you know, I got to do the round. I'm not going to get out and quit. I'd rather die in here than quit. So, okay, now I'm cold. Now what do you do? Well, you can either sit there and go, oh my God, I'm so cold and feel sorry for yourself and everything, which is what beginners do. But then as you become more spiritual, energetic, you then, in your own mind, your third eye opens up and then you travel into your third eye. I don't think a lot of people understand that. It's people think the third eye is what you use to look out at the world, but you can actually, I actually saw this great image posted. There's a uh, Twitter account, DeSantis or something like that. He posted, you know, really cool images, sacred geometry, and it shows the third eye collapsing into itself on both sides. What happens then when you have singularity of purpose, which arises when you push yourself into near-death-like experiences, you collapse in the third eye and then you have realizations. You have creativity. You make art. So because I have a big book coming out, Audacity, and I'm doing a video course, Grow the Mindset, Everything About My Life, and I have a film coming out, that, that's a lot of creativity. I don't, you know, that's a lot of, a lot of creative energy. So what I did is for about an hour, I kept going back and forth between the ice bath and the heat bath. And then each time I did that, I, I delved deeper inside myself and deeper into the third eye. And then I, I was writing more in my book, Audacity. That's how, that's how you become creative. And that's also, if you do have a personal problem, singularity of focus does help you solve that problem. Why? Because you can't, right, right now, everybody here has problems, right? Oh, my relationships aren't the way they should be. I'm not making enough money. I'm not physically healthy. I'm a little tired. I'm overworked. I'm wondering if we're going to have World War III and the, the news is bad, right? We just, we have all these sort of problems floating around. Well, you don't solve problems. You solve a, right, you solve a problem one at a time. And the way that you force all of that anxious energy into a very concentrated dose through the singularity of focus exercises, go run a hill. See what problem you have at the top of the hill, right? As people go, people go, Mike, I got, you know, problems. Okay, go run a hill. When you get to the top of the hill, the problems aren't there anymore. You're the thump, the thump, the thump, the thump, the thump. You feel like you're about to die. Controlling your breathing is the problem. Oh my God, I lost it. But then you learn how to control your breath. You can learn how to control your breathing. And then you find out that if you can control your breathing, then you're more focused, more creative. You find out that you're able to focus on problems because breath and losing control of your breath is how you lose control of your thoughts and how you, how you have anxiety. So then you control your breath. So go run a hill and at the top of the hill, I'm going to say, hey, what's your problem? You're going to be like, oh, I feel like I'm going to die. Good. Singularity of focus. Now, by the way, consult with a doctor. Don't go run a hill and, you know, have your parents try to sue me. This is not medical advice. Disclaimer, disclaimer, disclaimer. Right. I'm just saying like, like me, that's the way I talk to myself or people that I coach in, a, you know, my own clients who have signed the waivers and everything. So if you run a hill, you might have a lot of problems at that bottom of the hill. You start running up that hill, your only problem now is not quitting before you're at the top of the hill. And then if it's a good enough hill, then at the top of the hill, your problem is you feel like you're about to faint. That's singularity of focus. And then I go, what's your problem? <sighs> I, you know, I don't even know. Then you realize, okay, that now that doesn't mean your life is perfect magically, but you learned in how to develop singularity of focus. And then ice baths and even cold plunges are the same way. Go into a cold shower. <laughs> First thing you want to do is leave. So you now have a binary choice. Go turn the cold water on in your shower. Walk in. You have a binary choice. Leave. Don't leave. That's your only. That's how you develop singular focus. So before you walk into that cold shower, you have relationship problems, 
health problems, money problems, friendship problems, imaginary problems, real problems, you name it, you got it. But when you walk in, you now only have one problem. You have a binary choice. Do I leave or do I don't leave? And then the more that you don't leave, you're reinforcing in yourself that you don't quit. You're, you reinforce in yourself your ability to focus. That's how you develop singularity of focus. And then once you get past the phase where you want to leave and you hit that calm place, right, that meditative place, that Zen space where you fold into your third eye, then you can go do creative work. So I do all my creative work in my head. In my head. So when I'm in the cold water, I start shaking for a minute, and then I go deep inside my own self, my own consciousness, my own third eye, and then I don't even know what's happening with my body. I, then I am not even aware, and then when I leave that area, I realize like I have goosebumps everywhere. My skin is like super red from the cold, and you know, I can barely walk or whatever because I get so deep in that singularity of focus. But when I go deep inside that place, that meditative place, that third eye place, this is where the magic happens. That's where the creation happens. That's where the creativity happens. What is the line between death or feeling like death and life? Are there women here having childbirth? The greatest moment of a woman's life, man's life, right? But the man experiences it differently is, and I was in the room with Shauna when she had our daughter. I think if you're a man, you should be in the room because how often will you experience that? So I was in the room the whole time, mindset coaching her. The moment before the greatest experience of your life is also the moment of the most pain, the most fear, the most discomfort. The closest you feel like the pain is so bad you feel like you want to die, that's what happens before creation. But that's what nobody tells you. That's why when people tell me, oh, I'm a little bummed out, I go, well, are you suicidal? No. Okay, we're not suicidal. Good. Go be bummed out. What, what is, uh, but I want to be happy. Uh, I want to be happy. No, you've been brainwashed and thinking you want to be happy. You want to be in that moment where you're creating something because I can tell you that the fulfillment of creation, the fulfillment of creation is a thousand times better than transient happiness. I will never forget the day I finished Gorilla Mindset and I knew that I had something special, something magical. I was at a coffee shop in Saigon, Ho Chi Minh City. And I was standing up and I typed the last few words and I closed my eyes because I wanted it to, you, what you want to do for your own mindset training is when you have an amazing moment, you want to pause and you want to feel energetically how the energy is coming towards you and then you want to create, know how to recreate that energy. So I can recreate that moment to like 10%. You can never recreate it to 100%, but I can recreate it to 10%, which is still pretty dang good. And it's certainly better than just the normal experience. So when you have that peak experience, it was like I felt like a cascade of, I don't know, snowflakes, very gentle. Snowflakes are pouring down all over my body and calming my body and fulfilling my body and energizing my body all at once. That's creation. You don't feel that way chasing happiness every day. But the, the night before I finished, I was having panic attacks. I had to listen to binaural beats, right? The night before I finished, I was laying, I was in my apartment. Well, actually it was a mansion in uh, Vietnam. And I was laying and my whole body was achy and I felt terrible because creation and art is also rejection. See, all top side energy draws a downside energy. So I knew, I knew that this book was either going to be a winner or a loser, success or not. And I put my heart into it. And when you put your heart into your art, that's why when people go, oh, I don't care if it's a success. No, that's only what they're telling themselves to rationalize the bad feelings that are going to come if people reject your art. So you go, oh, well, I don't really care. Well, you care, but you're trying to psych yourself out, right? So you, you tell yourself you don't care. But I was honest with myself. I've always been honest with myself. And I, and I knew that I cared. And I was sick, right? Ached physically. Had, you know, had to have binaural beats on before bed. I couldn't relax or anything. 
And then that was like that for two weeks. And then, then I had Gorilla Mindset. I was like, all right, I got something magical here. I didn't know it was going to do as well as it was. I didn't know I was going to end up where I am. That I never foresaw. I thought I'd sell 10,000 copies, to be honest, because if you sell 10,000 copies as a first time author, that's a lot of books, 10,000 in a year. That is a actually top 1% book. If you sell 10%, if you sell 10,000 copies of your book the first year, that's better than 99% of all books published in a given year. So for me, I was like, I know I'm going to do the 10,000. I didn't know I was going to do what I've done. But before that could happen, I had to suffer. I had to have agony. I had to feel sick because I was entering, right, the creative birthing process. So you, you're, you're always going to feel it. It's the same thing with childbirth. Now, you can't always have that peak experience and that singularity of focus, but what you can have are little moments like that. You can go take a cold shower five minutes, right? You can go take a cold bath. You, you put ice in it or not, whatever, you know, consult a medical professional. And when you do that, you learn to develop singularity of focus, and then you learn how to turn in on yourself and how to connect with your third eye and how to fold consciousness in itself. I'll show you what that looks like, actually. Don't go anywhere. I'm going to show you the picture that I found that, that I've never seen a picture better, better represent, better represent this. Now, it, it was just remarkable. This is the feeling that I have during a peak state. And I'm finding it right now on Twitter. And when you see it, well, I mean, maybe it won't mean anything to you. I can't tell you what your experience is going to be. I can only tell you that when I saw this picture, I said, yeah, that's exactly what I mean when I tell people that, that your consciousness, your third eye, folds in on itself. That, to me, na it, this picture nailed it. And we're looking, we're looking for it right now. It, so be sure to like the page. Like and subscribe because the, the payoff will be worth it right now. By the way, who else in media talks about stuff like this, right? That, that's another sort of point I think a lot of people miss is that you can't just pivot to the subjects that I'm talking about. That's why I think it's funny they go, oh, Mike is finally you know, trying to talk about spirituality. No, this is not new. These are subjects that I've thought about for decades. You, Because you can't just start talking about consciousness folding in and on itself if you're a journalist. This is the kind of stuff that, that I was into before journalism. This, it, these concepts are why I was so successful in journalism. Because I, kn I knew how to find singularity of focus. I knew how to manifest energy. I, you know, I knew how to get big stories. All through, you know, the power, all through the power of the mind. And of course, this guy, boy, they retweet a lot of images. So maybe, maybe I'll show you, maybe I'll show you guys the image another time. That'll give you guys a reason. That'll give you guys a reason to come back. And this guy, he tweets as much as I do. Good for him. It's not, I'm, I'm he's a good tweeter. So the tweets are good. Uh, now I know what it feels like when people try to find something on my timeline. I have, I have now empathy. I have now empathy for all of you who go, I know I saw this thing on Cernovich's timeline. Where is it? And you're scrolling and scrolling and scrolling and scrolling and scrolling. And you can't find it. Now I know. I have empathy. I have empathy for all of you. But also I have singularity of focus too. So I am going to find it. And then I'll, I'll retweet it to the top of my timeline. Ge sacred geometry. It's all over the place. Sacred, sacred geometry is real. You just have to learn. You just have to learn what to look for and how to tune in. Tune into the universe. Next time. I'll show it to you next time. We'll do a whole, we'll do a whole, 
what do you want to call it? a whole podcast periscope we'll do a whole sh whole show on it. oh by the way thank you richard ricardo for the uh, super chats so thank you for the super chats and all that thanks for liking the page sharing the page by the way i'll show you what i'm looking for just so you know so this is a really cool account with a lot of like great art i don't even know how to tell you how to find it it's like s-t-i-l phase still phase but they post like a lot of really cool stuff a lot of really but this isn't what i was going to show you what i was going to show you is something else but yeah this is really 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 cool account so thanks for watching. You can go for today only, $9.99. Get that great skincare product, GorillaMind.com, G-O-R-I-L-L-A-M-I-N-D.com, GorillaMind.com. Great product. is the best that I've ever used, and I've used all this stuff for like 10 years. The sale ends midnight. I don't know if that's midnight Eastern or midnight Pacific. I'm not in charge of it. I'm just uh, cleaning up the shop. I'm just uh, the humble... The humble, the humble gender. GorillaMind.com, G-O-R-I-L-L-A-M-I-D.com. Also go to Cernovich.com. Find great information there. Syra, here, let me, uh, oh, she's going to see the iPad. I'm Sorry, streaming. Yeah. What's that? Okay, Syra okay, wants to say hi for a sec. She's, like, she's also like, really tired. Oh. Hi, Dada. Hey, Dada's right here. There's the people. That's the people right there. They want to say hi to, to the Syrah. She's happy. Well, wow, you were ready for bed, kid. Yeah, she's still sleeping. It's bedtime for you. Da, ba, da. Ba, da, ba, da. No, All right, everybody. Thanks for watching. You can always find my writing at C E R N O V 